What is up? So well overdue follow up here on the new property. And as you guys can see over my left shoulder, a lot has changed. Um, this is what I would call conscious clearing. Uh, where we came through, all we did was take out the invasive. We left all the nice oak trees. We left all the nice cedar trees. Um, what else did we leave? What else did we leave? Pine trees, magnolias, um, everything else. Tons of cherry laurel, tons of camphor have come out. And let me just tell you, I've cleared a lot of sites in my day. I think the biggest site I ever cleared was a 20 acre site of Brazilian pepper. And that stuff is cake to get out compared to the cherry laurel. The cherry tends to sucker, come back up. You really got to get the root system out. Um, had a lot of people tell me, you know, get a forestry mulcher out here. Sounds great. Yeah, they cover a lot of ground. All that stuff would have just invigorated and came right back up. So it is so important to get that stuff out from the roots. I can't even tell you. We had an excavator in here, I'm coming back out with the excavator for probably a month still. Um, we haven't done a ton down here on the west end of the property, but this whole entire entrance is opened up. I mean, this was all invasive where the building's gonna go or where we hope to put a building eventually. And one of the big things you're gonna notice, fence poles in the ground. So fencing company started last week. We're into the first week of June right now. I think one more week and they said they'll be done. So got some poles to go up over here on the back line and then they're ready for fence so they'll be pulling fence putting it up here probably within the next week it'll be done i'll get another follow-up for you other big thing that happened i'm stepping out into the sun i'm gonna put on the shades you guys if you want mulch you got to bug these guys you got to stay on top of them um you got to put up a sign we put up this sign and literally within two days i had 10 yards 10 loads of mulch i've probably had two to three hundred yards dumped we had zero mulch sitting here this morning. I believe they've already bought two loads. They've probably already spread a couple. Um, we've started mulching some of the roads. We've started mulching around all the trees. And, you know, obviously not everybody has mulch trucks driving by all the time, but this is working really well for me. Being on a road frontage like this with a bunch of traffic going by, you know, put a mulch wanted sign out here. These guys are doing U-turns to come in here. Um, really good access. They can set their chipper down. They come in, they dump, they go back out. And it's really, uh, that is key. I've got both sides on here. And I'll tell you, day one, we put up this side, um, you know, maybe got half as much. By having the southbound and the northbound side, it made a huge difference. So mulch wanted, yeah, they're coming, they're calling. We're getting Davies in here. We're getting all the big companies in here um, that do the power lines, things like that, not just the local tree companies. So if you guys are struggling with mulch, chipdrop.com will help a little bit. Googling your local tree service, being a thorn in their side, getting on top of them is key. You gotta bust their chops. So this is a very low area on the property. We ended up with a lot of material here that was dirt with wood chunks mixed in it, um, you know, that we couldn't burn. We've done a lot of burning. We've probably got about six days of burning the brush that was on the entire site. Um, and what we've been doing is, is digging a hole over there and burying the woody material and taking the clean fill and bringing it into this area and just trying to raise it up a little bit my goal is to build a building, um, you know, large office structure or something in this, you know, this location at some point. I'm a little torn on that. Um, Got to be honest with you, since I bought the property to today, I started pricing probably about 30 days before we closed the building. That building's gone up, I don't know, $75,000, $85,000 just in the building cost, not counting the building, you know, labor cost of putting it up, the price of concrete. So it's getting kind of brutal. Um, we're hoping to get closed in, get the nursery kick in. Hopefully things settle down a little bit, then we can jump on the building. Haven't really made up our mind there yet, but you know, we still have the goals of kind of getting the operations going, getting everything kind of set up over here on this side. I'm uncertain what we're gonna do with the building over here. I've actually been looking at some creative ideas. I've been, I've never done a crowdfunding before. I've considered like prepaid education, prepaid tours, who knows, prepaid plants. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys think that's a good idea. I've never tried a GoFundMe or anything like that, but we are considering ideas. I mean, I'm, I'm not a millionaire. I can't just cash flow the building. We're bleeding out a lot of money just cleaning up this property, just bringing in fill dirt, just, you know, spreading mulch, taking out the invasives. This is no small undertaking. I think if I was to have done this job for a client, you know, clear seven and a half acres, get it ready to 
put a nursery on. I mean, this is every bit of a $75,000, $100,000 project. Um, this is no small undertaking doing it myself. It's probably already cost me, you know, 40 to 50,000. We're not even done yet. Um, you know, we're constantly breaking belts. We're constantly blowing hoses on machines. We're constantly having to buy new chains on chainsaws. And as you all know, inflation is crazy. Um, chains that I could buy for 17 bucks or 28 bucks. I mean, DEF fluid for the truck, 15 bucks to 25 bucks. Obviously we know fuels through the roof. I don't even need to mention that. So everything has gotten really expensive. Fixing things are really expensive. Kind of a little torn there. That is one of our nicest live oaks on the property that was really choked out by invasives and vines. We've gotten it cleaned up. We had a lift in here. We took a couple of big dead trees on this back line for the neighbor. Do got a little walk gate over here for the neighbor ladies. I have two awesome neighbors over here on this side. They're both used to be school teachers. They want to come over, learn, help, volunteer. I was like, I'm going to give you guys an access point so you don't have to walk all the way around. So we have a little walk gate there. We've got this big 40 foot gate over here on the main entrance. And then over here on our south road, we have another 20 foot gate. And this is that trail I was just talking about that we mulched out. This is very temporary. This isn't going to work long term for trucks. This is going to break down. You know, once a, a year goes by, I would say it's going to get really soft. It's going to be hard to just, you know, come to always drive big trucks over this, bring materials in. It's going to get mucky. It's going to become some really nice black dirt, but not great for driving over. And I just know from my own experience, my own farm, you know, it doesn't work for the long term. So um, probably end up putting some type of base down here, rock, gravel, whatever that is. I can't even find gravel right now. Prices of base have gone double um you know hauling fees obviously are double so everything's been kind of going through the roof but you guys can see we've really opened this up you know the idea being we have the retail location over there a bit of a display area demonstration gardens and you come into these areas and we'll have more of the plants laid out and more of a dappled light situation give you a little bit of a, a break from the full intense sun down here in florida because it is no joke um, it is 15 20 degrees cooler under here than it is over there in the full open areas. Um, lots of little water oaks in here, lots of pines in here. We did leave some bigger cherries. These two big pines obviously are staying. These are long leaves. Um, you could tell by looking at this tree, you know, before I pot the property, I know I talked about it in the last video. We're constantly digging up trash. There's boats dumped out here. There's tires dumped out here. Um, there was arson out here. There was a couple of fires. Pines are a fire species. You can see they've taken a little bit of fire damage. Actually, these ones all over here on this side have a little bit of black on them too. So this is that material that I was talking about that is not burnable. Um, it is good, good organic matter. We need all the dirt we can get. So we're not getting rid of this dirt. We're just going to end up burying it and pulling up um, clean dirt and using it to raise lower areas. The only low spot I have on whole property is kind of right where I want to put the building on the north end. This all slowly starts to drop into that area. and getting these trees kind of, uh, what happened was that pile was getting so big by the road, we just had to find a place to put it. So we, we did the road, we started to do around the trees rather than move the whole pro you know pile to the other side of the property, figured we've made the ground so bare, we've exposed it so much, we'll start covering it back up, getting some of that skin back on the soil. So getting some mulch out, we're gonna start planting some eucalyptus, some bamboo here really soon. Trice is over here spreading away. And it is going down. So, guys, I am standing in the annual vegetable garden area. This is where we plan on doing, whether it be pickup or CSA or just weekly veggie sales. I'm going to do some veg veggie production here, some veggie production at my um, my original property, and you know a lot of kind of exciting stuff coming this year as we step past the veggie production area. We plan on putting down black weed mat over there in that area kind of putting a lot of nursery space down. And you can see the fire over here on the right is smoking. He must have turned it a little bit because we haven't had a burn permit in probably over two weeks. But, you know, it was a month since my last permit. I dug up that fire pit, getting it ready to load again. We put some brush in it and it caught on fire. So those embers, those coals, they do stay there for a while. Um, you guys are probably wondering about the tortoises when we're going to get that feature. That is coming up here in July, I think. That's what the guy from FWC said. And some of these pink flags are marking where there was tortoise holes, but these tortoise holes were never really active. Um, you know, there was a hole there though. We have to get them to sign off. You can see this one's really closed in. It's also really quite round, which probably means it's not a regular tortoise. 
but we're just playing cautious there. Same thing with this one over here. This one is uh, well overgrown, obviously not active. You could tell before I brought the property, they had been driving through here. This one was even semi-crushed on the front. And if you look closely, you'll see a little bit of a tortoise hole. And we really want to see that kind of concave on the top. When you have a perfectly round hole, it's typically not a tortoise. Um, another one over here in this area, and there's a couple more on the other side of the fire pit. All of these really seem to be inactive. The active tortoises we have are basically on the back of the property and we're getting as close as we can to them to get the invasives out but we're going to leave that area alone for a while we have plenty of other areas to start working trying to save as much wood as we can whether it be for firewood whether it be for lining beds um, not burning at all i'm trying to save the oak i'm trying to save any of the good looking cedar and all these little stubs you see coming up in these beds these are all those nasty cherry laurels these are ones i was talking about you just can't come through with the forestry mulcher got to get these guys out from the roots if you want to completely get rid of them so place is coming along this is all cherry laurel that needs to get burnt that is something too you don't want to inhale that stuff while it's burning um, it's definitely not something good you want to breathe and here is my second gate there's my old boats that were dumped here before we got the property and all of this area, there's not a lot to go in there and see. Um, we're selectively clearing, staying away from the tortoises and just slowly starting to open it up when we get time. But I think within the next two weeks, we'll have a well in. Um, obviously the fencing will be up. I'll get some power in for the well, be able to get some security in here. And soon enough, we'll be able to run the business out of here, expand the nursery here, get the garden going here. My biggest holdback is still that main building and just making the call what we're gonna do. I've looked at other alternatives, you know, I've looked at buying, you know, a, a temporary office and it's just the amount of money that goes out and lost for that temporary office for something that's really not gonna be a great long-term fit. You know, we want something there where we can have a classroom, um, you know, have some handicapped bathrooms, um, you know, a little bit of a showroom that doesn't need to be an air condition, but out of the rain, um, somewhere where I can get materials dropped off all the time, whether it be pallets of fertilizer, worm castings, biochar, um, potting mix, whatever that may be, we need a dry space to keep that. And also where people can just pick it up when they come. So long-term retail in the works. We'll have to kind of stay tuned on that. Here's another tortoise um, hole. Not really sure this one's active either. There's not a lot of fresh sand there. Um, you can see leaves on it, grass on it, but it has that concave that we want to see on the tortoise hole. So we know that was a tortoise. Um, not really sure if that one's active, but I know the ones in the back, you can see fresh sand. There's actually one in particular right over here I could show you guys. I see him coming out almost every day. And I'm not sure if it's a him or it's a her. You actually have to flip him over to see, and it is illegal to touch tortoises, even to move them out of the road. So um, you, can't, you cannot touch a tortoise. So we've taken down the neighbor's fence here in the back and we're gonna be putting up our new fence along the back. And that just used to be the wood post with the farm fence on it. And the, the chain link is gonna be going right along here. We ripped the poles out over here on this side. And there's that little white pole. You guys wanna see an active tortoise hole? I can show you one of those real quick. Got some stringers up here. All right. And this one is definitely active. You can see the fresh soil, little balls of sand. I don't know where this guy's at, but yes, he is active. So I think I already told you guys that the tortoise is gonna be the mascot here. They're not going, they'll be part of the tour. Oh, that was beautiful. Little hawk feather. Oh, no lack of uh, hawks out here. No lack of uh, what else have I seen? Owls, we've seen some cardinals. We've definitely seen some interesting bird species out here. Um, got some swallowtails that come around. But the property is coming along, guys. Um, you know, this rain event, when these happen, they really show us where the low areas are, where the high areas are. And that's what's really kind of showed up there in the front of the property. A lot of that water is coming in off of the highway. The highway is much higher than the property. There's a little bit of a drainage issue out there at the county to where that water is coming in and not going into the 
the sewer pipe like it's supposed to. It's actually, I think, it's supposed to cross the road. So, but I'd say we made some serious progress, guys. Place is looking really cool. We've got some beautiful cedars out here. One thing I can tell you is I know that DOT has just approved the widening plan here for Highway 41. I've called them. I've tried to see the plan. They don't have it together yet, um, at least for the public. But just trying to find out, you know, if they're taking any frontage here. Um, you know, do you know what, what should I do as far as my planting goes? We know long term we might have to bump the fence in, but I'm thinking I'm going to do a staggered row of bamboo all the way along this front entrance, probably about 10 to 15 foot in, and maybe put some eucalyptus in front of it. Um, but just something to have a long term barrier, hide some of this road noise. This way, when you're in here, you're not hearing it completely. Um, a lot of a lot of the neighbors have commented how they really like how opened up it is now. They can come up to the stop sign. They can see if cars are coming before they even get there. Unfortunately, you know, once the bamboo comes in, that's going to change a little again. It's going to be a little bit more closed in, but the place looks night and day. I'm going to go get the drone now. I'm going to try to throw it up, get you guys a little overhead. I have had issues here flying the drone, so there's no guarantee. I'm going to see what I can do, so. Whoa, some concrete. There was a couple of uh, seedling loquats. Obviously tried to leave any kind of loquats or fruit trees. Left a lot of persimmons alone here on the property. That's a live oak, that's a water oak, and those are all cedars until we hit that other water oak there in the back. But you can see where all this black muck is, really, really low area, and it's just coming in off the road. And what it's supposed to do is go to there, all the way to that tube that crosses under 41. And what's happening is there's no real swale cut in, so everything's coming off the highway, coming right into the property, unfortunately. So a little bit of a belly in this area, nothing we can't fix with a little bit of fill dirt and a little bit of rock. But you know what's really exciting? We're getting mulch. So stay tuned. I'm gonna try to get the drone up. I'll try to get you guys another video after the fence is done. Once we get, get some nursery mat down, some cover crop on the veggie areas, lots of exciting stuff to come in the next month. So we are making progress. We're out here every day, um, minimum of two guys. Some weeks we have five guys. Just depends on the schedule and what we have going on for installs. So. Stay tuned, most importantly, pound dirt.